Whoa, what's up? Today's video is on Michael Eric Dyson appearance on Undisputed. God damn it. If you knew here, what we do here is read, listen, watch, and we block talk, break that shit down. God damn it. Look here, we use curse words. If you don't like that, you should leave now because we don't believe in that shit here. But what we do here is break down propaganda in a block talk motherfucking way, and I do mean a block talk way. Not your fucking way. Not CNN, not MSNBC, or Fox. But before we get to this idiot let me let y'all know what you're in for for him he the type of motherfucker who like to tell a long ass story like to get you hooked and fucking basically dizzy and then he get into his real fucking parts of the situation like when he said what Kaepernick did was make us have a conversation about who is American and if he being un-American by defending the people that the troops defend god damn it see what I'm saying like stupid bullshit like that because from what I understand god damn it it was about who was being murdered unjustly on these motherfucking streets bruh who can't just walk outside and start a business god damn it who can't just get hired at Walmart and become fucking manager within three days just because of their skin color god damn it that's what I thought it was about I don't know what the fuck uh Michael Larry Dyson talking about but I'm gonna I'm press play on it and let y'all break this shit down god damn I'm gonna help you bruh Break this shit down. I know y'all see the glares by now. Listen to this shit. Well, you know, in long in story books, first. Stop. I have a long discussion of Kaepernick because I think what he did was extremely important. There's been a transition in sports from social conscience to social service. So it's easier for an athlete to be seen with a little kid going to the hospital or uh, helping to build a home. But in the 60s and 70s, it was social conscience. Long How do story. I make a stand in defense of vulnerable populations and peoples? Hank Aaron speaking out about racism, Jim Brown, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Muhammad Ali. So we celebrated Wilma Rudolph, Althea Gibson. We celebrated those athletes who were taking a stand and who were doing a righteous thing by identifying with the vulnerable people. And I think Colin Kaepernick vulnerable brought that back. People. Yeah, he Nigga, you people vulnerable people. He engendered some controversy. But what he was really trying to force us to do is to have a conversation about who is American, what gets to count as American, and am I being un-American and against the troops if I take a knee in defense of the people that those troops have been sworn to defend so he really forced a, a significant and serious conversation see see that's what he said the whole thing colin kaepernick was trying to do he was trying to get us to have a conversation about who was american y'all it's that simple who american man is this un-american to kneel that's all colin kaepernick wanted it wasn't about you murder get being fucking murdered for pulling out a cell phone. It wasn't about you being murdered for having on a hoodie with Skittles in your fucking pocket. It wasn't about you being murdered for stepping out your fucking car with your hands up or being choked to death on the fucking street and the cops who do it get away with the motherfucking shit. They get a vacation and a fucking day off paid vacation. And they back on the streets to murder more black people. That ain't what it, what it was about. According to Michael Eric Dyson, it was about who American and shit like that. Because you still want to be one of them. You want to be American, huh? You want to, uh, we shall overcome with people. You want to still sing and shit, see? Michael Eric Dyson is a fucking plan. I told y'all, they give you your villains and they give you your fucking heroes and they give you your fucking plants like this. He's a plant supposed to be me. Uh, plant supposed to be hero god damn it but he's really against us you heard him the shit was about who american and make it your stupid ass out of here and what he about to come with is more bullshit i'm gonna just start exposing shit for motherfuckers talk that way y'all can listen even harder and go in on a bullshit he gonna talk about being positively fucking polarizing making people understand you dig talking about he want to understand him with the people he made them un have understanding that these people People are going through it. Man, fuck all that. We ain't worrying about nobody. See, people from his generation, you did. They still trying to have understandings with people. And that's not what the fuck we doing no more. Them, the same fucking people who watched you be loaded in boats, you trying to un have understandings with them. The same people who hung people off fucking trees, did they understand shit then even when it was fucking worse? You still want to get them to understand. You won't have a course with them. Teach them a course on understandings of what the fuck them and their government is allowed to do to fucking black people. Then he going to say, oh, well, they tell Colin Kaepernick, hey, you're a rich guy. You know, shit like that. See, it ain't about individualism, though. God damn it. 
It's about tribalism. That's what kind of people we are. We not from the West, goddammit. We not motherfucking individuals. We're not individualism type motherfucking people, goddammit. We may be fucking materialistic in a way, but we not individualistic, goddammit. And then he gonna say he identifying and transferring wealth to vulnerable people. Y'all heard me say something about that vulnerable people part, right? Vulnerable people. Nigga, you vulnerable. We fighting every fucking day. We clawing every day. You up there chilling with them vulnerable to them telling you, hey, go calm them niggas down and shit. You better go tell them niggas about Martin Luther King. You better go tell them niggas to uh, march and sing and all of that. And you better go say indubitably and positively and all of that old bullshit to distract them niggas. See, that's what they seen you to do. We know our enemies these days, motherfucker. You witnessing the rebel network. Now, I'm going to let y'all listen to all the shit that I just told you. He about to say it. Press play. Do you feel like that it had eye-opening? Is that fair to say? So the, the anthem, like, no. wow, is that what it's talking about? Yeah. You know, retrieving those slaves and bringing them back? Long um, story first. forcing us to say, look, you should be understanding of what these people are confronting. And these are people, you know, people say, well, you're a, a rich guy. That's the point. A rich guy who's making a lot of money is identifying with and it's transferring some of that wealth to those vulnerable people. So, yes, I think it makes a, a tremendous difference. And I think he had a, a significant impact for the le not the least of which he gave light to Black Lives Matter. And he Let's pause right there. He gave light to Black Lives Matter. Motherfuck Black Lives Matter. We know who Black Lives Matter is in case they ain't told you. That's motherfucking George Soros. He's not black. Your life don't really matter. It's a fucking chess game that he doing. He from England. He the same one who made the fucking Occupy movement. What the fuck you talking about? That's major chess game type moves. You think he give a fuck about a black life? But he probably the one who sent you. He probably the one who owned you. You probably in that nigga pocket talking about... He gave light to Black Lives Matter. And watch what he about to say, y'all. He about to say that we should identify with Black Lives fucking matter even if we don't agree with them. Are you fucking insane? See that way y'all can loop all of us in and just say we Black Lives Matter. Why the fuck would I loop myself in with people that I don't agree with? What the fuck is you talking about? See, that's why he could push that Democrat type shit to you, you dig? Them people don't identify with you. You think Democrats give a fuck about you? It's all about them winning. They, tell it, they say that shit all the time fucking bill maher was just not praying for a recession and shit just so trump could lose he hoping the economy and everything get fucked up so you think he give a fuck about your black ass but watch this dumb motherfucker tell us some bullshit about we should identify with motherfucking black lives matter and then he gonna go into some bullshit talking about the veterans let me tell y'all something i'm a veteran if America really give a fuck about the veterans, what they'll do is speed up paperwork. That way when people like me apply for shit, I wouldn't be waiting 80 fucking years just for y'all to say, you're missing form WWDW2-6 and all of that bullshit. If y'all care about the veterans, you'll go visit uh, Walter Reed Hospital and see how fucked up the conditions is, goddammit. Would you think shit changed because it was on the news a uh, decade ago? You think that shit changed? You know how many Walter Reed hospitals it is? If they really give a fuck about the troops, see? See, and I'm a veteran, motherfucker. Y'all be thinking, oh, it's just some old hood nigga out here yelling and cursing. Bitch, I'm a veteran. Fuck is you talking about? But you wouldn't know that, would you? And I joined after motherfucking 9-11 talking about some bullshit like that. What are you going to say? Oh, I'm going to let it play just so y'all hear that part at least. Then I'm going to go in more. He said it's an important movement. Beyond that, he said it's important for people of conscience, I don't care what your color is, to identify with these people, even if you don't ultimately agree with them. And then thirdly, he was suggesting, as some of the support from the veterans uh, indicated, that look, it, not all veterans think that what he did was a horrible thing. Some of them said, no, we went to war to defend the very right of us to speak. And now that the politics have shifted on 11-9, uh, we see that we're living in a different world. That kind of act of social conscientiousness is even more important right now. Mm. Why do you think so many people, non-minorities, mm. had a problem even after he told them what he was protesting? Well, you know, I think, Shannon, it's hard for people to understand if they're not of that particular group that's being vulnerable. Like, when men... Y'all heard that? It's hard to understand when you're not of the particular group that's vulnerable. For real? Let's listen to his example. 
hear the word gender, we think, oh, women and so on. No, you're a man. You have a gender, too. Yeah. And sometimes that masculinity is toxic. So men don't often see what women have to live with every day. Many white brothers and sisters or people outside the African-American race don't understand this is what it means every day. We can walk down the street, and the greatest privilege of many white Americans is to encounter a police person and not die in the encounter and to live what to tell them. fuck? It. Many African-American people, you included, you want to... Let's stop it right there. Y'all heard what the fuck this dude just not said, goddammit. First of all, just because I'm not a woman don't mean I can't identify with what's wrong with society. Okay, example, y'all, just so y'all can understand me. Uh, women are being murdered by fucking cops at a higher rate than men. Hey, that's fucking wrong, and I don't have to be a woman to say that that's fucking wrong. Hey, uh, women got their own water fountain, and it's that fucked up water fountain right there. But, man, we got a fire-ass water fountain. That's fucking wrong. I don't have to be a woman to know that. See? Oh, men, um, women not being allowed to set up, set up businesses at the rate as men. That's fucking wrong. I don't have to be that. So what, what you doing? Giving them a pass. See? See, y'all? That's what we do. Expose propaganda. Now, who fucking side he on? And you heard that key word, toxic masculinity? Oh, that sound like some shit you got paid to say. Oh, Terrence Crews side of the game. That let me know somebody paying you. Oh, toxic masculinity and type of shit like that, Shannon. You know, long ass story. Now he about to get into shit. Oh, and hold on before I skip over that. You know what the fuck? fuck he just said he said the greatest advantage one of the greatest advantages of being white is being stopped by the police and knowing you ain't gonna die knowing you ain't gonna fucking die y'all heard that no the greatest fucking uh one of the greatest things is knowing they can murder somebody and get away with that shit scot-free Another one is knowing that you can be fucking broke one day, but shave one day and become manager of Walmart. You ever saw that fucking uh, show, uh, Undercover Boss? All they got to do, you know, shave one time and go to work about two weeks and you the fucking manager. I, I could give y'all a story of somebody I know, goddammit. He was white, worked at the same time as the black dude, black dude colder than him and everything. But all he got to do is be named Brad, shave, you look uh office like, oh, Brad, that's Brad. Let's move Brad up All of a sudden Brad fucking the manager And that nigga still in the freezer stocking And tell me that shit ain't true But this motherfucker here Making excuses for him They don't understand Because they not us Shannon Now look at you Shannon He gonna get into the shit with Shannon And tell him Oh you could be stopped any day And you know harassed by the cops And shit like that man See I told y'all He one of them storytelling Indubitably positively ass nigga Who think they bout to jive us Think they bout to get us But not today god damn it You're witnessing the fucking Rebel Network Press play one of the most handsome, articulate, you know, well-built black men who's ever existed on this planet, and one of the fiercest and, and, and sharpest and most insightful on any given day, wow. you could on a side road be subject to the acrimony and the hate of a police force that could snipe you or wipe you out. So this is the kind of stuff we dealt with and we've dealt with, and I think it's extremely important for many white brothers and sisters and others to understand, to be empathetic to uh, the condition, the plight and predicament of people who have to face this normally. So if- I don't know about y'all, but I don't have no white brothers and sisters. I never had white brothers and sisters, see? That's how you know he a plan. What the fuck is you talking about? Just say white people. You still ain't say black people yet, y'all. We still waiting on him to say black people. All he referred to us as being vulnerable people and talking about, he looping people in. He talking about basically minorities and he trying to ease into some classism, some classism type shit, you dig? See? Oh, all of us poor type shit, you know, trying to loop us all in. Not, that's why he been saying vulnerable people and uh, man, get the fuck out of here. We talking about black people. That's what he kneeled for, black people. I ain't hear him say Mexican, Latino, Asian, none of that. Black people, it's us dying. What the fuck is you talking about, your fucking plant? If you're not living it, you don't understand it. If you're not existing in it, you don't really get what's going on. When we hear a guy like Skip Bayless take stands in defense of, I'm not saying that because I'm sitting here. That's one of the bravest and most courageous things to do as a white brother or sister is to identify with those whose backs are against the wall and to tell others who are in his position, be careful before you make snap judgments about yeah. what's going Skip on. Skip don't I, give I a fuck. Skip be critical as fuck. You know, he takes for granted. More he thinks kissing. I'm just doing this. But right. he doesn't know right. what it means to More us in our kissing. community yes. to have him Amen. to speak. 
because a lot of people Amen. wouldn't. When we first started and this don't. show, and I thought, I said, okay, we're going to talk about it. We're going to be done with it. He said, right. nope, we're talking about it again. And I'm like, Skip, are you sure? Right. You know what, Skip? <clears throat> Let me tell you what Skip was doing, you dummy. <laughs> you said, oh, let's just talk about it and be done with it with your big goof ass. Then you wanted to just be done with it. You could have been, you had the opportunity of every day to say, hey, black people being murdered unjustly. I would love to have that opportunity on TV every day. But you, you say, let's just talk about it and be done with it. But because Skip wanted to talk about it, you think that skip was on some justice type shit no skip is a fucking capitalist dummy that's a hot topic skip gonna make sure that shit is on a um uh topic line god damn it skip gonna be like, hell nah nigga we talking about that everybody talking about kaepernick nigga we better get this kaepernick ratings money but you think he was just doing some gracious thing and all that bullshit but skip about to tell you what his agenda was or what he thought about it anywhere in a fucking minute after y'all finish wiping the nigga ass god damn it i might have to skip it because i can't take the the ass wiping you know what the fuck and i'm gonna tell the story and i haven't even told doc this LBG, LBG, LBJ says something. Mm -hmm. He says, if you can convince the lowest white American right. that he's better, he said, he used the term colored, right. but if you can convince him he's better than the best colored American, you can pick his pockets. Y'all, did, did um, Shannon Sharp just not fucking quote a motherfucker who called him colored? He couldn't find no other quotes. He had to quote a nigga that called him colored. Man, fuck that quote. Shannon, what the fuck is you talking about? He says, but if you give him someone to look Classism. down upon, mm -hmm. he'll empty his pockets for you. Mm -hmm. You see, what's happening is that we've pointed an arrow on people that we can look down. Immigrants, mm -hmm. they're coming here taking all your jobs. Right. The Muslims, mm -hmm. it's them that's coming here or spreading out and terrorizing the world. It's right. the blacks because mm -hmm. see that great job that you wanted or you want to get to that college, mm -hmm. it's because of affirmative action. Skip, I was about 11 years old, and I never told this story before. I shared it with Ethan Thomas last night, who was doing an expose on black athlete and social activism yeah, in yeah. today's society. Man, good. Hurry up I've with never the shared bullshit. this story. The I was story. in the playground. See? I think I was about 10 or 11 years of age. And this white, white kid said, Shannon, you got a hole in your pants. I knew I had a hole in my pants because mm -hmm. I put the pants on. But I didn't have any. And I looked at it. I said, you got a hole in your shirt and your pants. Okay. He says, so what? I'm not black. There it is. He would rather be poor than right. the poor. Right. But at least he wasn't black. Well, see, that that right there. Now, let's stop that. See, don't that just that just put a whole fucking check mark on the shit I said earlier. Didn't I told him the difference between him having a hole and you having a hole is that he can fucking go get a job and become the manager. You got to fucking find a way to patch up that hole to make it to that interview and talk like a white boy to see if you even get the job. God damn it. See him. He could say he could go into the job with a hole in his pants because they'll consider it fashionable. They'll consider that shit fashionable. Oh, he came in comfortably holding the pants. But you, oh, this unpresented Negro, he didn't even shave. You know, they'll go to fucking if you ain't got on that collared shirt. God damn it, if you ain't got a crease in them pants, but y'all sitting across and you look at the white boy, damn, he look comfortable in the motherfucker. Got on his open button shirt and everything, just chilling, like smelling like weed and every fucking thing at the interview, like, and he come out, yeah, yeah, boss, I'll see you Wednesday. And you going in that motherfucker nervous as hell, about to act like your name, Timothy and everything. I am Timothy, I've worked with services of, you know what all of that bullshit we gotta fucking do, but look at this apologist ass motherfucker up here. Uh, him and Shannon dumbass up here telling stories and shit he quote niggas who called him colored now we about to go in on Michael Eric Dyson with another we shall overcome tune let's listen to Michael y'all mm -hmm. you've just condensed mm -hmm. a whole history mm -hmm. of maybe a hundred years of African American thought and progressive insight about this issue mm -hmm. W.E.B. Du Bois in his book Black Reconstruction and other places mm -hmm. talked about the psychic wages of whiteness another story. at least I'm not a negro at least I'm not mm -hmm. that bottom feeder and what's mm -hmm. interesting Martin Luther King Jr. was in jail in Birmingham it is. and I love the, this story right? the, the white jailers come to him Dr. King, you're wrong. And Dr. King is, no, I'm not wrong. He says, segregation is right. He said, no, it's not. And then King asked him, now, how much money do you make? 
And then he tells him, and he says, you need to be out here marching with us. <laughs> because you are so dehumanized. Y'all heard that? See, I told y'all it was going to burrow down the classism. See, they trying to be to well, poor rich black people. and I mean, poor uh, black people and poor white people need to get together and understand that we all poor. Man, get your stupid ass out of here. Didn't you just let us know that uh, him having a hole in his pants and being poor is different than you being black and having a hole in your pants and being poor? Didn't we just say that? But yet you still say like we on the same level. We not, you dummy. That's what that little young white boy lets um, Shannon dumb ass know. But you still ain't even get the motherfucking story. Y'all don't remember the story the dude just told? He said the difference between him being poor and you being poor is that you're black, dummy. That mean he could kill you and get away with it you see you see but you want to try to loop us in on the classism angle because that's how you get paid huh we all poor we should be chilling together get your silly ass out of here boy you witnessing the rebel network we know all about this propaganda type shit you trying to do boy what the fuck wrong with these people the nigga just told him the story about the difference between him being poor and you being poor but yeah you trying to say we on the same level boy Fuck out of here. Humanized, but the point is, the overlords that exploit yeah. most of us can continue to do so if it convinces, as LBJ said, that poorest white person that Fuck he or she LBJ. doesn't have more in common with us, he called but you with color. each other and rich people Look, who are ruling us all. So I think in that sense, what Colin Kaepernick forced us to Over see, it's to make us think about more seriously, is the fact that race continues to make a huge difference in America. Class Over is real as well. And if we begin to, to, to really... See? See how he looped race in class after even though that little white boy already told you, even as a kid, that white boy knew, nigga, at least I ain't one of y'all. Y'all being poor and me being poor, it's a difference. Yet you still up here quoting a motherfucker named LBJ who called you colored and shit. What is you talking about? That's because you're playing and all it. You, you from the Jesse Jackson times, man. Get your silly ass out of here, boy. We own the you plants, god damn it. Let's let it stupid ass continue. Let's eat them up some more. It's almost, it's just really fucking easy y'all it's almost i could just press play and just you know run this shit like my body will just start talking on this bullshit you know i could just press play. that's how easy it is to kill this propaganda let's listen some more you witnessing a rebel a rebel network goddamn we understand how both of those factors work race makes class hurt more so when we talk about this last election as a referendum of the white working class and they need to be paid attention to imagine the black and brown and red and yellow working black classes and brown. who are even further uh, that nigga just said a word that I hate. Y'all know what the fuck he just said. Black and brown. Stop saying that bullshit. Ain't no brown people with us. We have no friends. We black and we fucking black only. What the hell is you talking about? And to me, if you mix and you say that you black, then you black to me, goddammit. But if they say, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to hear none of that. If you're black, you're black, motherfucker. You black. Fuck out of and if you say you're not black, you're fucking white. That's what I consider you. Cause I don't beg people to be black. God damn it. Once somebody say they ain't black, oh all right, motherfucker ain't black. Kanye ain't black. Raven Simone ain't black. What fuck wrong with y'all? That's they people. The hell wrong with y'all but him black and brown stop speaking for these people they don't speak for you and they don't give a fuck about you ask my brothers who in prison they know how them latinos be working with the aryan nation and all kind of bullshit against black people and crips and bloods finally fucking getting it and coming together to be long i mean deeper god damn it fucking putting their differences to the side on the street to be like man we got to team up inside of this jail because the mexicans is teaming up with the motherfucking aryan brotherhood why you up there talking about black and brown get so silly ass. are you in touch with the streets plant are you gr coming from this grassroots this the grassroots right here they better send these niggas down here to watch this shit, goddammit. This grassroots, you fucking plant. They inserted this nigga into our garden. Not a fucking loud, goddammit. I'm weed killer out you. Fuck wrong with you. Press play some more. Uh, indebted who are even further subject to social distress so when you think about it we have more in common as people of color across the range right poor whites people poor blacks poor latinos poor asian poor everybody see he still don't understand that other people being poor ain't the same as being black and poor that's why they all comfortable with our oppression because them being poor and you being poor is a fucking difference you fucking plan I'm sorry, y'all. I'm getting a little mad, you did. A little madder with this bullshit. 
than rich people of any ilk who continue to control American society. That's what I try to talk about in my book, and those are the kind of issues Fuck that if book. we're going to be honest, we could lead America in a different path in a different direction. Mm. I, I, you want, let me just say okay, this, Skip. Um, I've, I've told Skip, and I've shared with Skip, I said protest should be uncomfortable. It should make the people that you're trying to get their attention, it should right. make them uncomfortable. Right. But also, when you protest, you should be willing to give up life right. or monetary right. gains. Right, right. Am I right, wrong? I, I, look, Martin Luther King Jr. said, any man who hasn't found a, something he's willing to die for isn't fit to live. So, or, or woman, in that, for that matter. So yeah, you, you, you can't both make the statement be willing to take the hits and then complain about how they hurt. The, the reality is some people are going to have to sacrifice. Mm. Some people who make a courageous stand, like Muhammad Ali, sacrifice. How much money did he lose? Three years. We never saw Fuck him really at money. his height because of his conscientious stand. We did not. There will be a sacrifice in, in, involved, but if you're real about it and you're committed to it, that sacrifice is real. Y'all heard that bullshit? Because up next, for all of y'all who really stayed around, shit about to get really deeper. We about to really expose Michael Eric Dyson. But you heard what this stupid motherfucker said? It's going to be a sacrifice and shit. You, be, you can't complain about it. Who the fuck said that man complaining? That man was just trying to get a fucking job. So he complaining by trying to get his job? See, when you got to listen to the keyword. Oh, he complaining, huh? Talking about how much did Ali sacrifice? Nigga, they, them people knew what they was doing. Yeah, he sacrificed his fucking job. He ain't complaining about getting it back. He was just trying to get it back. He was doubling back. You know how the women got that settlement from Cosby? Then double back and got him locked up? Shit, he got a settlement from the NFL and he might be able to double back and get mon more money out they lame ass. What is you talking about out here? Talking about it got to be a sacrifice. What you mean sacrifice? It shouldn't be when you standing up for what the fuck is right. God damn it. And where was you? Where was Michael Eric Dyson? Now, this the meat of it, y'all. Listen to Skip Bayless because he about to say, because he thought he was uh basically attacking Cap Watch because he going to be like, why did he take a loan stance? Why he by himself? Because this is something that Skip had been saying since forever. Why he by himself? Because Skip warned him. He wanted him to be looped in with the Michael Eric Dysons, you know, thought maybe they can flip him you know that that way he become they conscious voice you know you don't think he could have benefited by being one of them watch he gonna say that like trying to loop him in with other plants why he ain't link up with y'all and take a little stance and shit you know the ogs of cooning like you jesse jackson and l sharpton and the rest of you coons watch i do appreciate what both of you have said about me and i just hope i can live up to it but to pursue this a level deeper, and you've been very deep with your eloquence here, but I need your perspective on an issue that's been raised to me by several of my black colleagues over the last couple of months about Colin Kaepernick. Right. He took what I viewed as a very solo stand. It right. was he alone, right. sort of against the world, and he did something he believed with all his fiber in to the right. point that it threatened to cost him his NFL career. Right. And yet, I wonder, from your pers both of your perspectives, could he have benefited from early on joining forces with more established Coons. and and honored black leaders such as yourself to, to do so in the way that Jim Brown conducted the Ali Summit that's so, right. so famous, the right. Black Summit back in June of 67, right. 67, I think it was, mm. when he called upon, obviously, Kareem Bill Russell right. to defend Ali and his conscientious objecting mm -hmm. over right. the Vietnam War. And, and, and sort of join forces to, to provide him with more national impact and sort of early credibility, would right. that have helped this protest even more? That's an interesting point because he did reach out to me behind mm. the scenes. I didn't want to mm. take any public uh, stance right. in terms of... Or Ooh, you heard him? You heard him? See, he a little slick talk. He did reach out to me. I didn't want to take a public um, breeding and shit stance. I won't... <clears throat> Public stance. I ain't want to take a um, public stance. Let me let y'all hear that shit again. Fucking dude reached out to you thinking you was a fucking OG and really was about this black shit, but you ain't want to take a public fucking stance and you supposed to be a public activist, nigga. Fuck you talking about. Press play. Or even credit for what he's doing. Because impact and sort of more. That's an interesting point because he did reach out to me behind yeah. the scenes. I didn't want to take any public... Uh, stance in terms of or that's an interesting point because he did reach out to me behind yeah. the scenes i didn't want to take any public uh 
stance in terms of, or even credit for what he's doing, because what he did was stance in terms of, or even credit for what he's doing, because what he did was important. That's an interesting point, because he did reach out to me behind yeah. the scenes. I didn't want to take any public uh, stance in terms of, or even credit for what there. he's doing, because what he did was important. Here's the here's the tricky part of that. You know, here's the story before I just realized that I exposed myself and I ain't even fucking helped that man when he reached out. Let me give you a long ass story to get you off the fact that he reached out and he tried to get me to fuck with him, but I didn't want to <laughs> take a public stance. Uh, I used to, when I would talk story to Jesse time. Jackson, I said, man, Jesse I Jackson. To work with Martin Luther King Jr. Ooh. How fair that was. He said the line wasn't long, brother. The line wasn't long to die. <laughs> to your the, point, he the, wasn't that. The young. line wasn't long to die. The, the line wasn't long relief, to sacrifice. The line wasn't long to give up what you have in order to invest in the people in the long term. So all of these black people who who remonstrate against Mr. Kaepernick, yes. where were you? You've got a voice. Why didn't you stand up? Why didn't you join him? Why didn't you say what's going on here is is good? You know, because most of us, like any color of people, watch our hides. We're worried about the bottom line. Will it affect us? And I understand that. No, no, don't try to, we ain't letting you back out from that shit. Y'all heard that dirty motherfucker? After the dude reached out to his fake ass and he said no, he got the cheeks to say, celebrities, where the fuck was y'all? Why didn't y'all stand up? Why didn't y'all make a stand? Y'all heard this motherfucker? And I'm about to replay it so you can hear his fake ass. He just reprimanded people for doing exactly what his fake ass did. You ain't won't take a stand, you weak motherfucker. Why you gonna say something about celebrities now nah, then? God damn it, with they weak ass. We know they coons. Fuck you talking about. You witness to the rebel that work, man. Press play. I'm, a I'm not saying that, you know, because most of us people in the long term. So all of these black people who, who remonstrate against Mr. Kaepernick, where were you? You've got a voice. Why didn't you stand up? Why didn't you join him? Why didn't you say what's going on here is, is good for you? You've got a voice. Why didn't you stand up? Why didn't you join him? Why didn't you say what's going on here is, is good? You know, because most of us, like any color of people, watch our hides. We're worried about the bottom line. Will it affect us? And I understand that. I'm not saying that you should you should be oblivious to your brand, but what's even more important is though- Nigga, fuck your brand. You ain't, we know you ain't saying that because you was worried about your brand when the man called your fake ass and skip ain't even gonna let him skate away with it y'all skip about to re-bring that shit up like why you ain't help him in a way watch those people who have been branded throughout history as stigmatized and demonized and what colin kaepernick did was to lay it all on the line and those who were critical of him i can understand it's not perfect but then you have a you have the right to join him you have the right to call him you have the right as a you famous too. black person or a leader to reach out to him to forge connections and alliance he is going in on himself, ain't he? He said, you a leader too. You should have reached out. Of That's you. You talking to your fucking self, Michael Eric Dyson. You up here talking about some fucking, you a leader. You should have reached out. You should have called him. You should have did this. Even if you don't agree, fuck, I understand the brand. You talking to your motherfucking self and Skip about to let you know, well, what the fuck you wanted from your bitch ass? Watch. And one person can't do it all. That's true. But one well, person you can make such him? a huge difference. Henry David Thoreau said there's nothing more Fuck powerful Henry than a man who, you know, any man more right than his, than his neighbor is a majority of one. So in that mm -hmm. sense, Colin Kaepernick was a majority of one. That small gesture of standing down mm -hmm. in the face of the anathem created a furor, to be sure, a firestorm of controversy, but also an awareness that this is a serious issue. I mean, John. Did he want you to help him publicly or just privately? I mean, did John, he want listen. you to help him publicly or just privately advise? Did he want you to help him publicly or privately just advise? Or privately just advise, y'all? Did he want you? What did he want you to do, Skip asked? Like, what did he ask you to do? Let's hear what Michael Eric Dyson have to say on the subject. You're witnessing the Rebel Network. Advice. Yeah, just yeah. privately okay. advise. I mean, and, and look, I don't mind taking a stand. That's what I do. But but at the you same time, it was very important for. He, you did mind taking a stand. He said, I didn't mind taking a stand because that's what I do. You didn't take a stand. Remember, you fake motherfucker. You just told us I didn't want to take a public stand. <coughs> I didn't want to take a public stand <coughs> when you got choked up about it with your lame blind ass, boy. You didn't take a stand. You the leader who didn't help, nigga. Sitting there and let motherfuckers do the shit. Hugging this shit. Press play. Colin Kaepernick, to do what he did, I mean, did John. Did he want you to help him publicly or just privately advise? Yeah, just yeah. privately okay. advise. I mean, and, and look, I don't mind taking a stand. That's what I do. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I thought it was very important for Colin Kaepernick to do what he did, uh, to reach out and to forge connections among people. And he put his money where his mouth is. 
I mean, the man is what, given a million dollars of his, uh, the, the first fruits tithing, so to speak, mm -hmm. of his contract? That's even more important and more impressive because beyond the cameras and when the lights are no longer there, he's making substantive contributions to people on the ground, and I think that's extremely okay. important. Okay, last quick question on this. We went back and forth about this. Should Colin, at his next stop, and it's going to make it a little harder for him to find that next stop. Listen, y'all, I'm going to wrap it up after this. This the wrap up protest. If the next team says, City could continue you please to back off for this next year and just focus on football, should you do it or not? We're, what, we're, yeah, it's tough. I mean, look, he's uh, he, here's the irony. When you're doing well, then people will tolerate anything, sure. right? I mean, winning is a, is a cure for many sins. If you're not winning, then your social conscience may cost you even more. And I think Colin Kaepernick has to examine himself and say, yes. what's the most important? Basically, he gonna jump around that and not say, hey, you should continue to bring light to, you know, us being murdered unfairly and shit like that. He ain't say that. That's what he should have fucking said, but um, that's what I expected. I expected him to fucking sell itself out. What did we learn today? They give you your heroes and they give you your motherfucking enemies, see? Michael Eric Dyson have a lot of people fool and I'm proud of whoever watched this full motherfucking video He got a lot of people fooled. He got on the eyeglasses that I taught y'all about you did You know, he always had them. Then you're gonna see T.I. with him, Jay-Z, Killer Mike See, that be that little signal you did They let their little hair grow off. They allowed him to have facial hair, you know Shit like that, I'm telling you That's when they supposed to be conscious They supposed to be brothers, god damn it They went in with guns Came out with jobs. Once again, y'all holler at me.